Good morning, everyone. My name is Matthew Fellinger. I am in resources at Rural Cap. I focus on recruiting and learning and talent development. Uh, thanks again for joining us this morning where we're going to discuss Roma and Lean and the convergence of how we're using it internally and hopefully give you some ideas as how you how you may implement it in your organization as well. We really have three um, topics we want to cover and we are under a very limited time frame with about 40 minutes. So we're going to move through this pretty quickly but comprehensively. We ask that you hold questions etc to the end. We'll provide you an email link you can send them to and then we will respond to everyone. Um, so starting off we're going to talk about just how we are using but just how we are using Roma and Lean together within our organization. Um, secondly, we'll be talking about the similarities between Roma and Lean and how they can help your agency achieve its you know, desired goals, outcomes, et cetera. And finally, we're gonna show, we're gonna demonstrate, or Carla's gonna talk about us being a, a thought leader as it comes to using Rome at Roma and Lean management. Together. Okay. That being said, yes. we're just going to roll right into it. And it's my pleasure to introduce Mitzi Sparkner. Mitzi's been with us since 1999, and she really focuses on three specific areas, but plenty more as well. Uh, primarily, she's focusing, well, one of the things she's primarily focusing on is expanding our agency's uh, housing lines of business. Develop, developing new partnerships with public and private organizations. Oh, excuse me, all. If one house take, keeping thing, if I could get you the lines, that would be great. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. And, and then finally, Mitzi's uh, focusing on locally driven community planning efforts throughout rural, rural Alaska, and of course, working in affordable housing advocacy and policy. With that being said, it would be my pleasure to turn it over to Mitzi. Thank you, Matt. I just have some framing remarks about who we are, um, a little context for where we're going here for the next several minutes. The Rural Alaska Community Action Program, who is affectionately known as Rural Cap, is Alaska's sole cap agency. We were established in 1965 with an annual budget of about $25 million. Rural Cap provides services throughout the entire state of Alaska be um, displayed before you. Uh, for those of you who may not be aware, this is an area about one-fifth the size of the entire continental United States. And it uh, extends from about St. Louis to Los Angeles from one extreme to the other. Um, a lot of our air transp our transportation here is by air because there aren't any roads <laughs> in most of the part of the state. We have a workforce uh, over the course of a year of about 700 people of which there are over 200 that are located in communities that again have no road connection to Anchorage. We were an early adopter of Roma First Gen, which was a response to Government Performance and Results Act of 1993, and Carla's gonna talk a little bit more about that. And we're considered an early leader in outcome-based program planning. Now, following a leadership transition in the past year, we're in the process of getting caught up again on Roma Next Gen as well as implementing lean principles to maximize our resources to serve our customers across the state. Carla and I are both Roma implementer candidates, and over the next year, Rural Cap will be developing and deploying a cohort of Roma implementers throughout all of the agency's work groups. If I were gonna give you a 30 second takeaway from today's presentation, it would be just this. Both Roma and lean provide frameworks for continuous growth and improvement. Roma's focus is on the what we do and how we measure effectiveness. Lean is concerned with how we do it while reducing waste and releasing savings into services. Barbara now is going to review some of our experience in how we're deploying lean principles. Uh, let me just go ahead and change this. Folks, uh, Barbara Bell has been with Rural Cap since April, and she's the head of human resources. She's worked both in HR and as an executive director. 
and has an extensive experience with a variety of businesses such as the military, professional services, nonprofit, and gas. Uh, she and her husband moved here six years ago from Philadelphia. So it's my pleasure to introduce Barbara Bell. Thank you so much, Matt. I'm, I'm going to focus on two basic ideas. I'm going to start out with some general information about lean and then I'm going to drill down to where we are and where we're going specifically at Rural Cap as related to using lean to help us with Roma. First, some general information. Lean is based on two principles. Those are respect for people and the second is continuous improvement. Lean is pretty old. Lean was actually used in Japan, as many of you probably know, when the U.S. helped that country rebuild itself after World War II. And it just happened that Lean had been used in the United States during World War II in the training area to train the workers in our factories. We actually had so many people overseas fighting the war that we had to train manicurists and theater ushers and a whole variety of different types of people to do very complex tasks in a short time to do things like grinding lenses. These people would come in with no knowledge whatsoever and lean principles and training was used so that in a short 12 weeks they were providing super high quality lenses for use in things such as bomb sites. So U.S. businesses started paying attention to lean again in the last few decades in a desire to remain competitive. Often, we think of lean as manufacturing-based, but it can also be used in the service sectors, most prominently in healthcare. Lean provides a process that enables an organization to take steps to ensure that target goals are met, to measure impact and to reassess how we want to improve or do things differently in the future. Of course, continuous improvement never stops. And the key to engendering this in an organization, such as Rural Cap or any organization, is getting the people on board. And we do that through realizing that good ideas come from everybody in the entire organization and essentially by providing, providing a way by which everybody who's part of an organization are included and involved. So a lean approach to Roma is helpful because we see that by default, by following lean principles, respect for people and continuous improvement, that actually helps meet our targets under Roma. So looking at this from the perspective of the people of an organization, the improvements that need to be made are easier when using lean. And we have experience that we'll share with you already. With lean, change can happen faster because the people who are part of the organization are actually pulling the change and are participating in the change rather than it being something that is pushed from the top down. So now we will move into our next, move into our specific situation at Rural Cap. Some Rural Cap history. During the past two years, we actually had our CEO ED position turn over three times. Other leadership positions also turned over. This can be destabilizing to an organization, but at the same time, we're fortunate that our four division directors are all high performing, long tenured with the organization and have remained, which was crucial in our being able to deliver services during this time of transition. And of course, with transition and change comes opportunity. Our CEO, Patrick Anderson, was initially brought in as an interim in February 2018. He was selected to fill the permanent role in June. And one of his first challenges was after all the change that we had experienced at the executive level was to bring stability and reassurance to our people. 
So Patrick started introducing lean concepts early in his tenure. Concept one, respect for people, is nurtured by listening and valuing the talents and contributions of our employees. So Patrick spent a lot of time walking around, meeting the people in the organization, getting to know the people who actually do the work in the organization. So we're moving toward a more people-centric approach to work, which shows respect for people's own motivation and work approach. And this in turn harnesses their talents exponentially. And to engender trust, of course, if you want to get trust, you have to show trust. So that's a basic principle of lean. So here's a, a small example that I'd like to share to illustrate that. We currently at Rural Cap have a very long and legalistic policy and procedure manual that governs human resources. It covers everything from how we pay people to their benefits to how they should dress. In fact, our dress policy is three pages long and really specific. We're moving to change that to train and trust people to dress for their role in the demands of their day. So we, we have a variety of employees all over the state. Some of them are working in Arctic conditions. Some of them are working in offices. So how can you have a dress policy that's so specific to cover all those people? So we're actually thinking of making our policy for dress two words, dress appropriately. Well, to make this happen, there's not only trust, but also that we train our managers to lead. And we think it shows respect for people. We all know how to dress, dress appropriately. And that means that we train managers to notice if somebody needs steel-toed boots and they don't have them, that they address that immediately on the spot. So that's just one example, a small example to illustrate the respect for people piece that we're engendering here at Rural Cap. Another example we're doing, it's more of a pull from employees and managers than a push from HR that we're totally overhauling the way we recruit our staff. Focusing on recruitment, our old system was really command and control. HR controlled every step of the process and acted as a gatekeeper. So as a result, it took us over 90 days on average to fill a position and our employee turnover was 32%. That's a lot of people to hire in the space of a year. So in July, under CEO Patrick's guidance, we decided to convene a lean tool known as a Kaizen. Kaizen is actually the Japanese word for improvement. We did this Kaizen in July over three days, and we pulled in team members to work with us from all over the organization. We actually had 10 people involved from every division and from other administrative areas. So back to this Kaizen process, which took three days. After learning about the lean approach, which was facilitated by CEO Patrick, our first job, which took about a half day, was to develop what's known as a problem statement. Wow, that sounds so elegantly simple, doesn't it? But it actually took us a half day to actually come down and really define the problem at hand, which turned out to be one, sen one sentence. And that was, the rural cap hiring process is laborious, takes too long, and contributes to undesirable employee turnover. So the first step, of course, in solving a problem is knowing what the problem is. So bingo, we had done that. The second step was to map out our current process, also known as current state. We had to understand what we're doing, how much time it took, and identify the wasted time and resources in the system. Next, we envisioned what we wanted in the future. We designed a system that would cut recruitment time by more than half from over 90 days to less than 35. So we're now in the middle of implementing this system with HR managing the recruitment process, but giving up control to the managers doing the recruiting who've been trained, which is the key. What's legal, how to define criteria for success in a job and interview to identify those qualities. So we're giving up control from HR, and the way to do that is to train the managers appropriately 
make sure that they're pulling the system rather than us pushing the system. And it's already starting to pay off in outstanding results. We've recruited some outstanding people to add to our already excellent team here in the past few months since we did this Kaizen. We realize that any improvement we implement is never going to be perfect, but it's the attitude of constantly striving to improve the process over time. Just a few more words about this. Uh, all processes are, are documented in what's known as standard work. And you could also think of this as the, the processes that are followed, similar maybe to what might be a desk manual. So every process is documented, and as it changes, we, ch we document that. And that creates efficiency, so you don't have to teach yourself to do the same thing over and over again. The final point I'd like to make is that no matter what improvement is being enacted as part of Lean, the process that is advocated is simple. Plan, do, check, act. And it happens over and over again in a cycle. So we've already started to see results in implementing Lean here at Rural Cap over a few short months. And continuous improvement and respect for people is cyclical, and prevents us from falling into what we call a check off the boxes mentality. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, next, we're going to have Carlos, excuse me, Carla is going to speak with us about the similarities between Roma and Lean. Uh, Carla is our rural housing coordinator in planning and construction. She works a lot with our CSBG reporting, including the community needs assessment, and is about to complete her Roma implement, implementer training. So congratulations on that. So we couldn't have a better person really to introduce the similarities. And with that being said, I will now turn it over to Carla. Well, thank you everyone for staying with us. And thank you, Barbara, for that wonderful introduction to what lean is. And I'd like to, as Matt said, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the fundamental similarities between Roma and lean, because these are the worlds that we live in. So as Barbara pointed out, uh, the lean approach began before Roma really came on the scene. And it gained its substantial momentum with the study of the Toyota production system. That was developed by Taiichi Ono and detailed in the 1991 book, The Machine That Changed the World. Well, Roma, um, for everyone that's, that's gone through the training and understands it, it actually came out from um, sort of a reform movement as well. It came out around the same time in 1993 and was a result of that early 90s movement we all remember about making governments operate more efficiently. Government like business was the word that was hot on the street at that time. And so this idea gained legitimacy with the passage of the 1993 um, GIPRA, or Government Performance and Results Act. And then in 1994, we got the Monitoring and Assessment Task Force, which brought us Roma. So both of these ideas were happening um, subsequent. So it's not a new idea that nonprofits and government organizations would start integrating the two styles. In fact, King County, Washington has been using lean and a performance measurement approach akin to Roma since 2010. Because lean offers such a helpful framework, it works really well for CAP organizations implementing Roma. As we see, it links the efficient processes with the effective performance management. So in other words, managing by lean allows you to implement Roma by default. King County, Washington's Continuous Improvement Director, Jim Crissinger, and the Deputy County Executive, Fred Jarrett, outlined the parallels between these two approaches in a recent paper. And what they pointed out was that Roma and Lean both embrace the result, use of results and accountability. They both share that framing plan, do, check, act cycle, which requires regular and periodic data measurement and analysis. And then to use Roma, you start out very similarly to the way that you start out with Lean. You ask, what are our community's needs? And, but with Lean, you start out by asking, are we meeting our community's needs well? So as Barbara explained, Roma establishes the strategic direction 
And then Lean helps the employees do their work to serve the customers. So here at RuleCap, we know from our work with Roma that we need to focus on outcomes, helping families change their situation from struggling to thriving. Okay, so once again, how does Lean fit into improving those outcomes? Essentially, it focuses on the accountability portion of Roma. Lean creates an agency that has efficient processes. When an organization's processes are efficient and optimized, then agency resources can be preserved and redirected toward improving service, helping the customers that need it most. This effect creates more high quality outputs and then the movement towards the planned outcomes can actually occur in a more um, streamlined process. So I make the argument that Lean and Roma are fundamentally similar, they're in alignment. And you don't need to layer them on top of each other and create extra work because they integrate so nicely. So take, for example, the, bar, the, the example Barbara used, our current Lean Kaizen on the HR hiring and retention process. First, Roma helps us identify that the communities we serve need a CAP agency with the capacity to recruit and retain employees. The Lean Kaizen helps us identify where the wastefulness was occurring in this process. By integrating the lean methods with the Roma approach, we can make the aggregated marginal gains and co-create a process that will reduce our turnover from 32% to less than 15%. So now at RuleCap, we have a lean process that allows us to meet our CSVG agency national goal to increase our capacity and move closer to meeting our community and family outcome goals at the same time. And that's where the connection occurs. Thank you, Carla. And now we're going to have Nitsi um, yeah. and Barbara are going to tie up a few of these loose ends about our how we're building a stronger organization. Thank you, Carla. I think it was a great um, a great summary of how these both basically stemmed in the same space and time and, and really stemming from the same basic interest of doing what we do better so that we can deliver better services, higher quality services to the folks out there that we are chartered to be responsible for. So, you know, I'm sure you noticed in this whole conversation though that our application at RuralCap of Lean so far has really focused on releasing capacity in our administrative infrastructure. And we've given you a graphic of a house here to think about what is foundational. And obviously our infrastructure in the administrative side is foundational to our being able to deliver effective programs. Um, as Barbara mentioned, program level leadership and staff have been involved in all of the Kaizen that we've held so far. And many are already looking at ways to adopt lean ideas to boost productivity and release capacity on the program level, as well as what we're already starting to implement on the administrative side. At the same time, as Carlos so effectively articulated, we are advancing Roma in our planning processes, increasing our capacity to organize, and then to implement programs and services that stem from identified needs. The community needs assessment, the community development plan, again, that build on top of this foundation and that result in, guess what, measurable change. One of the hallmarks of both Roma and Lean is about, can we make it measurable? Can we identify key indicators so that we know where we are marching toward? And think about it as a roadmap it counts the milestones along the way to show that we're going to be getting there. So together, Roma and Lean show great promise in helping us to better define the what we do, how we do it, and how we know that we have succeeded in fomenting real change for the communities and the individuals that we serve throughout this enormous state of Alaska. Thank you, Mitzi. I think we do. Thank you. 
bear with us one second, folks. We're going to unmute. Um, we covered a lot of material in 20 to 25 minutes or so. So if you have a question, we can entertain those right about now. Carla? I'm just trying to... I mean, if, if everyone wants to unmute their um, computers, we can see if we can just take some questions rather than going through the chat. Anyone? So we had a question from um, Skagit Cap in Skagit County, Washington. Sure. And uh, how how are you measuring or how are you measuring uh, change based on your needs assessment information? That's a good question. <laughs> this is Mitzi. I'm going to be really upfront and say that our needs assessment is kind of a work in progress. Um, it's been structured pretty much along some of the lines of particular areas that our board was interested in. So what we're doing is we're positioning it, again, as, as a work in progress, so that as we implement our programs, we will be able to report back on key indicators. One of the things we did with our needs assessment was rather than having so many points that we needed to measure, was we came up with a core set of key indicators. And with the core set of key indicators, then we will be able to measure. Are we getting a 40 minute? Yeah. Oh, Carla, okay. do and you it, look, it looks on like we, um, we can go a little bit, we can go a little bit longer than we had anticipated. Um, okay. Are there any other questions? So this is Evie with HopeLink in Washington. Uh, my question is, when you were um, adopting the lean process, process. You said that it was initiated by your CEO, but as you were learning these methods, how were you learning these? That, that is, an, thank you so much for asking that question. Um, one, of, one of the most important things about lean that we talked about is that it has to be an organic process supported by the entire organization in order to be successful. So what, what our CEO did was educate kind of on an opportunistic basis various individuals throughout the organization. Some of it was, I believe, very planned and deliberate, and I think some of it was serendipitous. And by getting interest because remember we said earlier that we had gone through a dramatic change we'd actually gone through three ceos in the span of two years so there was a pull from the organization for hey let's let's restabilize ourselves let's get back on track and so it's always nice when the captain of the ship shows up and the ship has been going on really well thanks to really great people but that makes the organization ready for a change in approach. It was a matter of, you know, deliberate seeding of ideas and, and buy-in because it couldn't have, couldn't have happened. Nothing we did to improve our recruitment process. And we've also had finance-focused Kaizans and our development department has also done one. But it couldn't have been successful without everybody involved getting on board and as we mentioned it involved not just you know immediate stakeholders and operators within those administrative functions but it was also a process of engaging um, leadership as well as line staff throughout the program aspects of the agency so that we could all come in in kind of a living laboratory setting if you will and see what is this beast because as barbara mentioned i mean was there was terminology, there were a lot of things that were you know, very new to us. And frankly, given the amount of um, in this agency over the last couple of years, there, there was frankly a lot of skepticism. So the fact that it was very transparent and open and invited and engaged people throughout the agency to work through the Kaizen that we were doing so far 
I think really help to, to spread that out and make it more transparent throughout the organization, increase the level of acceptance. So this is Skagit again with a question. Um, was there a specific lean training that you took those, um, your early adopters through and how did you balance their regular duties um, with the lean training and implementation? Yeah, I, thanks for asking that question because one of the one of the principles that we followed was that a lot of the training was right on the spot. It was it was a concept called training within industry that's part of Lean, and the whole concept is you know remember the term train the trainer. It kind of came from that. So it was a combination of ad hoc. Hey, here's this concept. Doesn't it, 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 and it, and really, when you think about it, respect for people and continuous improvement are kind of intrinsic to most humans who are trying to do good or to do a good job. So that was the one piece, which was opportunistic. The second piece was the first part of the Kaizen, which lasted three days. Really, the first half of it was training on lean. What is it? How is it used? And so that background gave the 10 participants of that Kaizen the information that was necessary to execute the Kaizen. But other than that, we have not had training per se. And, and, and we, we believe that it can be done in concert with everybody's job every day, because it really lean becomes a way of thinking and a way of executing what you're doing. So it's not seen as like an add-on to the job. It's actually become part of the way everybody does their job. Thank you, Barbara. Any other questions? Uh, this is Evie at HopeLink again. Um, so to be clear, you, your um, internal CEO was your lean trainer or did you have someone come in? Excellent. The CEO was the lean trainer. and. The, the term for that in, in the Japanese is we've all learned vocabulary is sensei. <laughs> uh, but Patrick is our lean champion. And uh, he is right now the most well-versed individual on lean in the organization. Although I have to say there are others here who are rapidly, um, rapidly moving into that as well. Our goal eventually is to have lean trainers or senseis in the Japanese term dispersed throughout the organization so that these kaizans don't necessarily have to be scheduled for three days. They could actually be a you know a few hours or an afternoon when an opportunity arises. And may I just dovetail on that? If you don't have a lean expert in-house, there are lean consultants who would be more than happy to come in and facilitate um, training regarding that regarding lean and also getting the, the staff up to speed as well. They're not tough to find. Anything else, folks? Because we are coming up against the time. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for their participation. We covered a lot of material in a very short period of time. So thank you for bearing with us on that. What we'd like to invite you to do is if you have additional questions, need information, or maybe some resources, if you could email Barbara, uh, she'll make sure that gets to the right people within the organization. And so if you find something to write with, I'll give you her email address a couple times. It's very simple. B Bell, stands for Barbara Bell, at ruralcap.com. Again, that's B Bell at ruralcap.com. Um, anything else from the panel at all? And unless there's anything else from the field, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. And again, please send anything you, you have a question about to bbell at ruralcap.com. All right, folks, thank you very much. And we'll talk with you soon. Take care.